Hey everyone, Dr. Shake here from The Dentalist. In the last video we talked about synthetic polymers and today we're starting chapter 13 from McCabe which is denture-based polymers. It is basically the, the polymers that the materials behind the pink acrylic part of dentures you've seen a hundred times in clinic but probably never truly understood. Let's break down everything from polymethyl methacrylate properties to curing cycles, residual monomer, and even why some dentures smell weird if you don't process them right. Grab your notes. Let's make this easy. So what are denture-based polymers? The denture base is the part of the denture that rests on the tissues and holds artificial teeth. Most commonly used polymer for the denture bases is polymethyl methacrylate, which is called as PMMA. It is a synthetic resin as we talked about in the last one. But why PMMA? It is aesthetic, it has pink and translucent color, and it is light, easy to shape and polish. It is cost effective, but it's not perfect. Let's talk about it further. We'll talk about the composition of heat cured polymethyl methacrylate first. So polymethyl methacrylate comes in two components. Powder, which is polymer. Um, it is actually pre-polymerized polymethyl methacrylate beads and it has benzoyl peroxide as initiator and it has some pigments for color. Also opacifiers like titanium oxide. And then the other part is liquid which is monomer, like methyl methacrylate. It has hydroquinone, which acts as an inhibitor and prevents premature polymerization. And then there's a cross-linking agent, glycol dimethacrylate. So this powder and liquid, when mixed, forms a dough stage, um, which is actually used for compression molding. Now that you understand the components, let's talk about the polymerization reaction. It is a free radical addition polymerization reaction initiated by heat around 70 to 100 degrees Celsius. Benzoyl peroxide decomposes and forms free radicals. It starts the chain reaction basically since benzoyl peroxide is an initiator, right? An important thing to note here is that it is an exothermic reaction and if it is done too quickly, it can cause porosity due to boiling monomer. Now the curing cycles that you should know about is there is a slow cure and it is a long cycle, eight hours at 74 degrees Celsius. And then there is fast cure, which is a short cycle of two hours at 74 degrees and one hour at 100 degrees. Longer cycles basically reduce residual monomer since it has more time to polymerize, right? And then it obviously would have better biocompatibility. Now, let's talk about residual monomer a little bit more. Not all monomer converts to polymer. Leftover monomer is called residual monomer. And I also told you guys in the last video that if there is residual monomer, it could cause tissue irritation, allergic reactions, poor mechanical strength. And the way to basically prevent this is to use what? To use long curing cycles so that it has more time to polymerize. And also another way to prevent uh, the formation of lots of residual monomer would be to store the denture in water before delivery. Why is that? I want you guys to think about it, research, and let me know why are we storing the denture in water before delivery? How could it help reduce the residual monomer? We'll talk about it in the comments, okay? All right, now let's talk about the properties of polymethyl methacrylate. The advantages are aesthetics, easy to repair, it's cheap, and it has acceptable strength and function. The disadvantages would include um, its low impact strength, um, which means that it would fracture if dropped, mostly. And then there's water sorption, which would cause dimensional changes. It means it absorbs water, right? And it also has poor wear resistance. Now to improve these shortcomings and disadvantages, there have been modifications of 
polymethyl methacrylate to basically improve the properties. So uh, these include rubber reinforced polymethyl methacrylate. It's called improved toughness. And then there's glass fibers or ramet fibers um, incorporation to increase strength. And then metal mesh is also sometimes used to basically reinforce large dentures. You've seen it already, right? Now you must be thinking there would be some other materials that could possibly make denture bases. So we'll talk about the alternate denture base materials now. There's nylon, which is polyamide. It is flexible. It is used for partial dentures. And uh, then there's polycarbonate. It has high impact resistance. Then there's urethane dimethacrylate, which is called as UDMA. It is basically light cured. And um, then there are 3D printed resins that are now becoming more common in digital dentistry. Okay, so there are alternates available for denture based materials uh, if you don't want to use polymethyl methacrylate. It's not like you have to stick to it. All right, now we have to talk about clinical tips. Um, we always have to check for porosity when we're using polymethyl methacrylate. It's a sign of improper processing. Remember, we talked about the polymerization reactions. And then another clinical tip is if a patient reports burning sensation after wearing dentures, you have to suspect that there could be residual monomer that could cause that burning sensation. Remember? And then you also need to let patients soak the denture in water before wearing it. It basically helps remove the leftover monomer. And for fractured dentures, you need to remember that there is a possibility of repair. So um, resin repair can be done rather than a full redo denture. We'll talk about that further in uh, the upcoming videos. Polymethyl methacrylate is simple in theory, but so much can go wrong if you don't understand the material science behind it. So we will end the video here. I hope this was beneficial. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and make sure you download the free PDF notes down below in the description. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care till we meet again.